Greetings Monsterites and welcome back to World of Monsters Everything Monster and in keeping with that theme I'll be covering all my top solo board games and shouting out the monstrous ones in this collection as this is my whole collection that has solo playable modes. If you're really only interested in the board games that have monsters in them in some sort of way or manner then I did make those notes in the timestamps below. Now I did say that this is my whole collection that has solo modes as of right now, but I have a lot of stuff that's not unboxed, not unwrapped, and other stuff that's on the way. So this is going to be expanding. So if you want to keep an eye on what my top solo games are in the future, then be sure to subscribe and let me know. And just to prove it to you, here are my board games that are still in their original delivery packages. This is Endless Winter, Paleo Americans, Gloomhaven, Forgotten Circles expansion, and I think this is the only expansion I'll be mentioning. I do have more in boxes and in wrap. One of my most anticipated games, which is Aeon Trespass Odyssey, and also one of my biggest boxes. Arena of the Contest, Teneris Adventures. I said I wouldn't mention any more expansions, but this one is kind of a big deal, and this Kickstarter is what got me into the whole game. And the biggest box yet, can you guess what it is? This is the core game, no expansion in here it is frost haven <laughs> then we have the games that are still in rap or mostly rap such as the emerald flame nemesis lockdown conan the conqueror now this is an expansion but this is the expansion that makes the conan game solo playable i still need to get the original core box conan game so i can play all this together gloomhaven board game geeks top rated game for the longest time and yes i got frost haven already even though i still haven't unboxed or unwrapped even gloomhaven cloud spire and euthia torment of resurrection now if you do want to see those unboxing whew. now if you do want to see all those unboxings i do do that for the patrons that support this channel as that's generally not what the channel is about but who knows, it might change and adapt as more of you join in and do enjoy this content. Now with that, let's get into my countdown. Again, this is my collection thus far that I have played that is unboxed. So obviously things will change greatly on these lists as I have a lot of great rated and well-known solo board games that are waiting to be played. Now I have to start this with Descent Journeys in the Dark. Now Descent is not a solo game. It does not have a solo mode, but someone online did create a pretty good solo mode for it, which I printed out. And if I do ever sell this game, I will include that solo mode in here with all the minis painted. So keep an eye out for that. It's becoming more of a collector's uh, type of board game these days. But all in all, I feel that the solo mode is sort of, it's a little bit too much of a headache. It's not naturally implemented and in general i don't like that this game does not have this sort of campaign legacy factor what you've gained doesn't go on to the next and next scenario they kind of restart every time and number 13 we have canvas which has a very attractive box as it looks like an actual painting on a canvas that you can actually hang on the wall and it doesn't look like it's a board game it's a lighter game but it has a little bit of a brain burnery aspect to it of building up points not very monstrous although you might see some monstrous stuff in the artworks you create in it as far as solo mode nothing really pulls me to play it more often maybe in the future but i kind of doubt it and number 12 we have pandemic and with this i don't have the expansion because there's an expansion that makes it really truly solo playable uh just add some cards i think but since this is a co-op game you're taking over and well you're trying to destroy a spreading out virus or viruses and bacteria it's a little bit of a game where you kind of have to be aware of what's going on and here and there and it's a little bit a lot of that for what I like usually when I'm playing smaller solo games like this so it might just not be hitting my buttons the right way uh, maybe it'll hit yours better but also with the solo mode uh, expansion maybe it'll be a better game for me I don't know yet uh, I'm not sure if I will get that but that's pandemic not very monstrous of a game other than what could be some crazy bacteria out there Next up, a game that I do enjoy playing anytime, which is 
Canopy. This is a small little card game. It's not that small. I mean, once you lay the cards out, you know, it takes some table space, but it's a nice little compact box. It's a fun game. You got flora, you got fauna of, I think... Uh, I think mostly it's based on the Amazon, but if you like nature and stuff like that and card games, this is a great little game. I really enjoy it. I haven't played it much in solo, but actually it's a pretty decent solo game as well. Not very monstrous. It's got animals that do exist and plants as well. And at number 10, we have Dice Miner, and this is where the games are starting to get pretty good as far as, far as solo modes. And I sort of forgot how fun this game was in solo mode until I re- played it recently in thoughts of making this list and you can use the games are under 10 minutes so you can play like three games in about 30 minutes easy with this game and it's pretty satisfying it's a lot of dice chucking it's a whole bunch of dice that you just toss it is monstrous there are no miniatures in it, but you can play as a golem, you can play as a dragon, and of course you have their fantasy race of dwarfs. So there's dwarfs, there's beer, and there's mining. Number nine, Overboss. This game is just fun to play. This is a great multiplayer game. I haven't played it with more people yet, but it's a fun game. I can never deny playing this game. As far as the solo mode, they did what I love with solo modes, and that's they took it to that other level. You have one solo mode type where you can just replay it and try to beat your score, which I'm not into, and then the other one, which is sort of a campaign solo mode where you go through one scenario, another scenario, another scenario, and you add your points up in a in a pretty cool way and have different goals and things that you want to accomplish uh, to get more points. So I have to hand it to this game. It's a great game and monstrous. Well, obviously you are the overboss. You are creating. It's it's a simple kind of tile laying game, but you're creating. A world you're not focused on creating that you're kind of looking to what's gonna score you the most points and stuff but essentially you're creating realms little biomes where you have the monster on it and the type of biome whether it's desert or island and such if you like old-school games like Mario and that sort of pixelated look and feel and colors to it then this game hits the spot at number eight we have zombie side second edition this is my actual first zombie side game it is a game where you go around killing zombies zombies, getting loot, and making your character stronger and better. I haven't played it too much. I think two, three, or four games of it. I'm still going to be playing more. It's similar to another game that's on a list that I have higher. All in all, this game may go higher up on the list as I play it more and unbox an expansion that I have for it that has even more characters and zombies. Really, this game has, as far as being monstrous, yes, there's a lot of awesome zombies and a lot of characters. That are, there's even, you know, there's a lot of generic miniatures it's obvious what it is like John Wick there's even an Ozzy Osbourne one I can't wait to unbox that expansion and play as having my characters play as Ozzy so I'm I'm really just waiting until honestly I move and have a better setup and unbox all the rest of these games and have more time to play and by the next countdown who knows this might be higher but we'll see so definitely monstrous. And number seven, we have Caves of Ruinzori. This was a really small Kickstarter, a first project, I believe, for the creator of this game. Most people don't know about it. The rule book is terrible and it definitely takes some points down from this game. I didn't actually try the solo mode in it until I figured I'll be making this list. Once I got the solo mode for it going, it's a cool game, it's a fun game. You're racing to get out of a cavern. And so it's very enjoyable if you understand all the rules, but there's always something you need to go back to. There's some questionable things. It's just not well written. I wish they rewrote the rules, made it a bit more professional from that end, but I got to say the solo mode just playing against the cave system and trying to get out of it it was satisfying it was quite satisfying so this actually made it much higher than i thought i thought i'd be getting rid of this game once i played that solo mode and looking that it's at number seven i'm gonna have to rethink that is it monstrous not really the one of the characters you can be in it as a shaman that's about as monstrous as, as it gets so I'd say no. At number six, we have another somewhat small box game, which is 
Backwoods. Backwoods is a co-op game or solo, probably just better solo because it's a survival game. You're going to, it's, it takes place, I believe, in the late 1800s or early 1900s, I think around Colorado, but in the U.S., so it's kind of a Western, old, styly survival game. Some aspects of it, of it are better than others but in general a survival game i don't have too many of them that makes it pretty fun i know i put it pretty high on the list here because really this is just better as a solo game there's not much to it it's pretty simple setup once you figure out all the rules i'm sure there are games out there that are more known that are going to replace this in the future as i get more games and expand on it as far as monsters goes not too much really i mean mostly you're dealing with animals uh, wildlife such as bears uh, mountain lions and people but there is one encounter sort of encounter that you can have with the undead so because of that one encounter and there is another faith sort of aspect to this i will put that as monstrous and number five, the game that I most recently unboxed, uploaded that video again to Patreon to check out the unboxings there. When I do unboxing the, these days, I try to just showcase the monstrous stuff in the game on Patreon. So if you are interested, I mean, in general, to support the channel, but as a little perk, those are the kind of videos you get on there. That game is They Live at number five with this kickstarter i had to get a t-shirt because you don't see enough they live t-shirts out there i love this cold classic movie when i've been watching tutorials of it and such i see it being compared to arkham horror which i don't have but you may know that is one of the top amongst the top solo board games out there of all time i'd say it's a little bit more a little bit more finicky there things take a little bit longer to happen in it um what basically you go around here and you're you're building up your characters you're trying to find items you're trying to figure out who is the skull-headed invader and who is your friend and at the end you have a final kind of kind of a showdown to beat the game it's a little bit convoluted it takes a long time to play but you need to get a lot of things done so by the time the game is ending it's actually hard to get all the things you wanted to get done even though you've been playing probably for hours but with that this is a game where you draw cards things happen you're at the mall you read what happens pass or fail it's a choose your own adventure kind of game with cards dice and then of course what makes it monstrous the skull headed invaders uh it's been fun so far it's new to me we'll see where it gets on this list and number five here is the game that i said compares to zombie side second edition but beats it out for me of course i spent a lot more time with this game this has been the second big game that came to me from a kickstarter and you know was the, was part of the spark of it all uh village attacks is a fun game it's very much like zombie side if you ever played that you're throwing dice you have abilities there's miniatures on the board this is kind of a dice crawly uh, uh dice crawler a dungeon crawler sort of a game but you're not crawling the dungeons you're in a castle and you are the monsters you control the monsters and now you know why i got this game um i knew i have to showcase this, this on the channel one way or another and the invaders are the villagers that come in you have you have peasants that come in then you have hunters and then you have heroes which are a pain in the butt but you fight them off as monsters and there's a cool unlocking ability as you progress your monster develops there's another ability or an upgrade to your ability that you have that's really fun to do i wish there was more of it maybe someday they're, they'll make an expansion to that but so many cool monsters classic monsters that you can play and their abilities are awesome and everything it's actually a really fun game i just spent a lot of time playing it so you know i'm okay to take a break but i think overall with all that it's it it does it better than zombicide and i'm sure this game was inspired by the the first zombie sides so at number four this is one of my most replayed solo games that i have done due to the campaign sort of aspect to it and such and of course the monsters so very monstrous village attacks at number three we have black can you guess what it is this game has one of the strongest followings it was the biggest hitting kickstarter for a long time till frosthaven came out and that is kingdom death 
monster. Beautiful game. It's premium. This game, you don't have to buy an upgrade or a premium edition. This game is premium. Kingdom Death Monster is a boss battler kind of game with a settlement phase and such. So you have a very big board. You have your characters that you have your survivors and you have epic monsters that you battle and you use this big board to fight that monster then you have another phase the settlement phase where you're crafting stuff babies are being born so new characters are coming into the the world of kingdom death monster i played this game a lot particularly during the pandemic i haven't played since then i didn't really lose although i had to fudge them some things if you're a solo gamer you might know what i'm talking about people say it's brutal i have another game coming up that i think is the correct term is brutal this game is brutal yes the fights are brutal it's it's cool because the detailed injuries and the way you hurt the monster are very detailed but it's also very random you can lose a lot of things that you worked hard for and you were developing with a single random dice roll a lot has been said about kingdom death monster online i would like to express more feelings about it if you are interested in this game do let me know and i can make a video about it but one of the my bigger gripes too is it also has a big contradiction for what it's going for as far as the miniatures and and building them up so i wish that was different there's a community online that made their adjusted rules for this game which i'm sure make it even better and and maybe someday if I'm invested enough in this game to play it more often and such, I might get into that. I, I think that would be worth it if you do enjoy this game and you want to get the expansions. Otherwise, is it monstrous? Hell yeah, it's monstrous. It has some awesome, it's an adult themed game, but the monsters are awesome. The miniatures are awesome. It's a long playability to this game and it just, it goes so far and the different things that happen. I just wish there were a little bit more of the lore points to it that happen as far as like describing the monster um i like the first description anyway enough about this game for now because kingdom death monster is a big box and you should say a few more words on it it's a very enjoyable game one of my top solo games without a doubt at number two we have a game that i didn't think would make it this high on the list deep madness the box is a little bit dark they did just run another kickstarter with expansions and redesign because the first prints did have some darkness to it and you can just get those lighter uh, upgrades so I might actually do that because I do enjoy the game I didn't think it'd be this high because it's a long setup time it's a long play per scenario and so in reality I might be a little bit biased on this game too as this was my first Kickstarter board game that I actually ordered not the first one that it came to my house but the first one I ordered because it had the best deal on Kickstarter at the time for the longest time actually as far as how many miniatures and monsters it has compared to how much you're paying for it it's still one of the top for that monstrous again hell yeah this is a Lovecraftian underwater mining facility game where you have crazy monsters a lot of characters some again generic lookalikes to characters you would know from movies but you go through the game you get items you have to survive underwater situations now how is this different from for example zombicide village attacks and why some people might not like this is this game is brutal because it's not that random that you're gonna die but it is just it's a tough game it's a very hard game and you are throwing dice but the monsters are tough they're not monsters that like in zombicide or village attacks with the villagers you're gonna go and toss dice and have a fun kick and butt situation every monster you know is gonna be somewhat of a challenge and getting those dice to roll right for you and that's very important obviously so actually for me if I wouldn't have changed the rules, here's the honesty coming out. If I wouldn't have altered the rules, I don't think this could be as high because I just, I cannot win as many scenarios. And I don't like to have to replay and replay the same scenario. I'm not looking to grind with board games. I'm looking to have fun. So this is number one for me with my house rules. The house rules don't change any major rules except modify them, such as you have to roll, I believe, a five to succeed. I did lower that. I mean, in other games, I'm not going to do that. But here, there's so many things going against you. I lowered that to a four. There's a couple other changes I made. I believe that with those changes, that makes this game 
really good and i think they just they they made it too hard initially because it is a campaign kind of game you're going to go through one scenario once you beat it you go to the next one with the characters and one other things that I, one other thing that i changed is once your character dies one of them it you lose so you can be like five scenarios in that took you weeks you know to to get to or days for some people and then you one of your characters dies but you almost beat the mission the other three are fine and then you lose just because of that one i don't like that idea in games you have so many characters especially with these kickstarter expansions it's always fun to experience more characters and sometimes you don't get that chance if you're only bound to those four in the entire all the scenarios and who knows when you'll play again even after you beat that game and all those scenarios so it's a i find it's a fun house rule that one of your characters dies as long as you beat the rest of your scenarios with the rest of your characters you go on to the next scenario and you get to use one of those other one of so many characters that you have available to add into your party and continue until you don't have any more options and that's really how you die so that's my other house rule so i believe with all those house rules rules it's a fun game i wish your characters progressed like in my next game but at each scenario you kind of restart with items and such at number one you may have guessed what it is if you saw my packaged games that i still don't have unboxed i have two of this realm actually i have three with, with the expansion that's crazy um that is jaws of the lion gloomhaven's jaws of the lion at number one one now this is a campaign legacy game what legacy means in the realm of board games is that you progress the story progresses your characters progress you don't lose everything next turn next scenario and restart a scenario even though it's different you carry on things carry on and man does this game do it beautifully there's a lot of noise about these games out there i know um, but if you saw this in action and what it does and the satisfactions of opening boxes and seeing new cards, this game, okay, so what is this game famous for if you're not in the board games is it's a sort of dungeon crawler kind of game. You're on the board, kind of a developing tile board and you're fighting monsters you got characters very kind of unique original kind of characters and even their abilities if they're not that unique like a spellcaster this game does it well everything all around is good with this game but that main thing that it did is it replaced dice some people love dice they'll die by the dice but that's not the only way to do things and the best way so what gloomhaven does is instead of rolling dice you are building up a small hand of cards and each turn you can use two of those cards and one either an action from the the bottom or the top on those cards to do every scenario so you can strategize you can plan ahead that stuff you can't always you can do with dice but you have to have really customized dice and such so if you say you can't play a dungeon crawly without dice you're wrong because board games are all about computerization and automization of what we're used to dealing with in video games is hard to get done and there's so many creative ways to basically program and that's what board games are is programming and you have to learn the program to some degree as the player you don't have to design it but you still have to learn the program video games you don't have to learn anything about the program you hit the button and it's done for you that's what how board games are different and it's games like this and ideas like these where board games can really change up things and i honestly i get tired of the randomness of dice myself as long as there's enough mitigation only rolling dice and depending on it can make for a pretty unfair or dry or just random game and that's not what makes a good game you got to have more factors and color to it so anyway i did play through this whole scenario with uh once with a couple pl uh, characters i can now still play the other characters they can move on to the gloomhaven game the other beautiful thing is how it brings you in and teaches you this is why don't other games do this video games often do it where you get into the game and there's a tutorial board games don't often do that not enough we need more tutorial it doesn't even have to be a tutorial but a getting you in slowly and naturally into the game where once the first scenario is already in the realm of the game of the world but it is 
easier and then you learn more of the rules as you progress what a way to learn a game instead of just reading a 50 page rule book village attacks did as, that as well so kudos on that I, i'm sure we're gonna see more gloomhaven on these lists in in the future i'm sure it's on a lot of lists out there but i think uh we'll have other things going on here too that other lists don't have if you haven't seen that already now jaws of the lion is it monstrous yes i mean you're you're killing monsters it's it's a typical dungeon crawler although you're not just in dungeons um you got more standees you do have some miniatures but now they're going to be releasing miniatures for all the games too so if you love minis you love this game then there you go you got everything if you enjoy these kind of videos uh these board gamey type stuff do let me know and i again i made sure to showcase what is monstrous here so that it is relevant to the channel while i showcase uh, my love for these things Again, they live. Not sure where I was going with that. But yes, if you do enjoy more of the board game content, then Patreon definitely is the place for that. Again, that's not what Patreon is for here. It's not for board game stuff. Patreon is for exclusive content, for you to support me, for me to give back more between more stuff to happen between you and I and you having more impact on the channel. But yes, since board games are not what this channel is about then i'd like to keep it as as that group of content that i release for patron as well so just wanted to let you know have a wonderful day or night wherever you are stay monstrous my friends kingdom death monster is a bass bottler kingdom death monster is a bass again they live Not sure where I was going. Not sure where I was going with that.